In our first video guide, we uh, showed you how to just basically set up your rhythmic connection through Optimus. Not too much else went on in that video. Um, and so, you're probably at the same place I am right now where you have a, the stock template that came with it. And it just has a few of the free quotes showing. Um, but we're futures traders, so let's try and open up a futures chart. I'm just going to go ahead and use what we have here. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to do a new workspace and choose my own chart. So to do that, down here where these tabs are, where you can switch down here between your different templates or workspaces, I'm going to right click and I'm going to close all workspaces. I'm going to choose not to save them. And I'm going to do a new chart window. And here's where we choose our instrument. So in this case, a data source, you might have been on free quotes if you're still just going off the original. But our Optimus feed is based on this Rhythmic 01. So I'm going to choose that as my data source. And I have a few here just from playing around, but you'll probably not have any instruments here. And so what you have to do is choose Add over here on the right-hand side, and you can search for whichever symbol you want. So let's say I want to trade mini DAO. I'm going to put in YM as my symbol, click Look Up, and it's going to give me all the available symbols that I have to choose from and what feeds I have. It's going to show me the expiration date, the exchange, a description, and the symbol. So multi charts is a lot like zero charts in that it basically does the same symbol format. You're going to have the symbol at the start, in this case YM. Then you're going to have your month code. I want to do June, so I'm going to use M. So it's going to be YMM. And then I'm going to have my year code. For 2011, it's just going to be 1. So YMM1. And you can see that right here. That's what I want to add. And every time you add it, it's going to be added to your little quick choose right here. And it's broken down between all the different types of uh, symbols you have. Futures, stocks, indexes, cash, forex, custom, all that. So in futures, I'm just going to set up an indices workspace here. That's what I'm going to do. So I want to go back to add and get the Russell in here too. I'll look up Russell. And Russell Mini June 2011 is what I want to use. And obviously, Nybot has some different symbol types. But we really don't need to know that with this fancy little lookup thing here. So I'm going to click Add. OK. And I'm going to add the S&P to this first chart. I'm going to do a new chart window again. And I'm going to choose NASDAQ. I'll do another chart window. I'm going to choose the Dow. And I'll do one final chart window. And I'll choose the Russell. And it'll take a little bit for the data to load. And if we want to see all these charts, let's go ahead and let's choose the way we want to cascade our windows. We'll do that by going to Window and Arrange. And you can have them cascaded like they are now to where each new one is going to be plotted under it you can still access the ones behind it or you can arrange them vertically and they're all going to be vertically arranged same with horizontal or just arrange all and it's going to tile them like we originally saw and uh, as soon as all the rest of these load we'll have a lot more to choose from here and we'll come back to that when they're loaded okay so after a bit of a wait there while it downloaded the historical data we have our workspace set up. Now let's go over just changing the charts a little bit, doing different types of things, some very basic stuff, but stuff that we need to know. Um, I'm just going to choose this Russell right here. I'm going to enlarge it. And uh, to start with, let's zoom in so that we can see the chart better. So over here on this right-hand toolbar side, we have these bar spacing metrics. We can move the chart up or down. We can scroll left to right if we have enough data. Increase the weight, which basically makes it bolder or less bold. I kind of like it a little bolder. And then I'm going to zoom in. You just click and drag. And uh, I did a little too small, but if I click on this sidebar, my left mouse button, and hold down, I can scale it to where I can see. 
Now, I don't like this OHLC, and I don't really know anybody that does. Um, so I'm going to change this to Candlestick. And it's via these options up here, it looks like, is where I can change these. Candlestick chart, of course, a candlestick, line on close, line break chart. Um, there's Rinko data. There's our Rinko, KG, point and figure, and of course, Heikinashi. Now, I'll zoom out a little bit so that we can see these. That's a little too far zoomed out. Looks like we need to expand our price scale. So I'll click that, and I'm just going to go back to Candlestick for the rest of this video. Oop, gonna zoom out. Looks like we can reset scales here. And of course we can hide objects. But here we go. It's on one tick bar, which is why I cannot see these options up here, this OHLC and this Candlestick. If I double click here and I change it back to a minute via the settings window, I'm going to go to minute, I'll just do five minute chart, click OK, and it'll load that data and now these are available to me again. So I'll go back to the candlestick, which I'm used to, and I'm going to zoom in again. and. Let's go over just a few more things, adding some stuff to charts. Here's the quick version of what we were doing via File New, Chart Window, Scanner Window. We're going to go over these a lot in future videos, but for now we're going to keep it very simple. Um, let's add a few indicators to this chart. So I'm going to right click, and I can format the window. That's where I can change my properties. Format Instruments, that's where I can add another instrument if I'd like to. Um, Format chart trading, that's where I can add the chart trader to the chart. Click OK, and the chart trader is going to be available. Um, and then insert instrument and insert study. Insert instrument, I can add another instrument to the chart. Format instrument is where I change the resolution and things like that for this specific one that I have it currently running on. And uh, insert study. I'm just going to do ADX in the volume. I'll click OK on ADX. And uh, this is where I can change my period on the ADX. I can change the style of the line. If I want something a little easier to see or a little differentiated, I'll do a light blue here. Um, properties, we can set, if we have multiple instruments, we can set what we want to base the study on. You can select where you'd like it to be. You can show it above your chart on the same as where your chart is, which is subchart number one. If you had more indicators, there'd be other options such as subchart number two, number three, and so on. Show on bottom and hide. Hide would just hide it from view and you would only see it in the data window or if you're trying to do some kind of alert thing which is available via this tab, alerts. You could have it there but you don't have to see it on your chart. I'm just going to click show on bottom. That's what we're all used to. Scaling, this is just where you can change it to some, some specific stuff. Volume profile, you can base it on the last. All that kind of stuff, all that good just customization, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple, leave it at just ADX, and I want to add my volume as well. And I'm going to go down to volume, and I'll choose volume up, and I'm going to choose a darker green here, and I'm going to use this as default so I don't have to change it every time. And again, these are all the properties from before. Now, I want to do volume up down, kind of like I've seen, or if you have used NinjaTrader, they have that. And what I can do in order to recreate that is insert study, go back to volume here, and go volume down, add that as well. Style can be red. And under properties, I want to show it on chart three, which is basically this third one. Each one's a chart. So, subchart number one is where our actual candlestick is plotted. Subchart 2, that's where our ADX is at, and subchart 3 is where our volume up is. So I want to put it on volume up so I have volume up down on the same thing. 
I'll click OK and now you can see if I zoom out a little bit here I'm gonna actually decrease the bar spacing and then I'll scroll you can see my volume up and down plotted as we go so that's adding indicators to a chart I'm gonna zoom out of this one I'm gonna just pick a few different things for each one of these charts you can be candlestick I'll do point and figure here or Heikinashi I guess um, and once you have everything set the way you like it you can go up here to file workspace and save it as something I'm just gonna call it the video workspace and uh, if you already have one, you can, of course, override it. And down here is where the tabs are. You can actually move them to the top. And uh, you can switch between different workspaces. So this is my indexes. I can see all of those. I can see my data window. I can, of course, close out of it. If I want to show it again, I'll just go back to View, Show Data Window. And uh, that's basically it. That's a real basic overview of setting up your charts finding a new futures contract, saving a workspace, and adding indicators to your charts. A lot to go over in one video, but uh, it's all pretty much closely related. I think you should get the idea.